Marvin, can you hear me? No, you're going to be in the main show. Oh, yeah? Why not? Yeah. We have a failure to communicate. I hear you, Ken. I hear you, Ken. Yeah, okay. Very good. All right. You hear me? You see me? I see you. I hear you. Okay. Better than yesterday at the end. <laughs> I think there's a better connection actually for Zoom here in the base. We're back in the base midrash this morning. We davened in the uh, main show. I think the oh. connection is actually better in here than it is in the library. I thought so. The library is not good for, I don't know, the Wi Fi doesn't work in the library. Well, if you're back davening in the show, then I'll come back to daven. Apparently, they have finished all the electrical work. Oh, good. That's got that impression, and they did landscaping. When you come to show God willing on Shabbos, you'll be able to see. They put the transformer in? All I know is that that's why we're back in the main show. One of the reasons we're back in the main show, because now that that's there, you've got more air circulation, larger room, things like that. And that's, I think, what the rabbi was. Is that the approval from the whoever is the county or whatever? Yeah. That's make probably the case. The what, they got to give it in advance? I thought they'd have to give it. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. We're at the okie dokie. I think they do it. I thought FTL does it, and then the county comes out and approves it. Apparently, they can't throw the switch until the county approves it. All right. All right. That's what was taking so long at the end to have it done. Yeah, that. Oh, okay. That would make sense. So you get somebody to come down and. Uh, yeah. That would make sense. Love your press. Love your press. Well, you know, I'm just okay. Our numbers are, are diminishing a little bit. Michael's away and Mel is away. I spoke to Gary's not uh, going to be joining us once he gets back into the swing of things. We'll see. And the uh, Chaim left for Israel. Won't be back till the end of November or some point in November. Who's that? Chaim Reese went to, they made Aliyah. Oh. Oh. Okay, I'm going to start us with the uh, with the learning sponsor. I did uh, I did yesterday's. No, they got today is what the twentieth. Yeah. All right, so we can uh, get underway. I right, have learning sponsors. A year of learning by Sue and Arnie Garlick, memory of Malcolm Mann and Philip Mann, and Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch and Beryl Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch. Yosef Meyer Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Henya Rivka Pearl Rosner, Bat Arav Tzvi Hirsch, and memory of family murdered in the Holocaust. Arav Tzvi Hirsch Ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Mirim bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, shall assure her children and grandchildren in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Israel ben Harav Akiva, Marsha Fedebush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Federbush, Oriel Pinchas Ben Arav Shimon, Sharon and Fred Liska, their family and many friends. In memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman, El Bas Yaakov, Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sibel, Irving and Pearl Kaplan, friends of Avi Gitler, Avra Mayer Ben Shimon, and Martha Gitler Charna Bad Yeshaya children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova, Bad Yisrael Dove in her memory, friends of Malka Levy, Malka Bad Yosef, 
friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim, Charlie Gelfenstein, and Sam Levine, in memory of Ramona Levine, Rachel Mata Bat Asher. I have a month of learning by Marsha Fedebush, in memory of her husband, Oyo Pinchas Ben Arav Shimon, by Gary and Marsha Schrager, in memory of his father, David Ben Yosef, and his mother, Freda Bat Hendel, by Dov Budlander, in memory of his parents. Sri Ben Yaakov Yitzchak and Bela Rasha Basarav Dober, and his in laws, Yehuda Tzvi Ben David Nachum and Alta Chaya Bas Avram Yosef. Mel and Haran Haller, also a month of learning, in memory of his father, Avram Ben Zev. We have uh, a day of uh, learning by Barbara Gillandauer, in memory of her twin brother, Pesach Yehuda Ben Binyamin. And that is it. May Hashem is having Aliyah, crank a Rafia about the Yeshiva Hashem Matliyah, Machol B'nai Yisrael, a good Geben Shia. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right. Okay. Marvin is on. Steve, yes. are you on? Steve there? I didn't see him. No, I don't see him either. Okay. All right. So. Is Harvey there? Not yet. Not yet. Um, want to start. Okay, before you start, I just need you about maybe a minute or two after the share. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We had a lot of back and forth. Shakla Vitaria dialogue. Okay, yesterday in the Gemara as to really what was the basis to, uh, in terms of understanding the, uh, et, the use of the Hadassim, I'm sorry, the Aravos and the Lulav, what did we compare it to, why it was uh, Doche Shabbos on one occasion as opposed to another occasion what was it based on? Where did we derive it from? All of that, okay, was that. So we're on, I'm picking up on the Mem Gimel, Ahmed Bays towards the bottom. Okay? So in that whole discussion, we eventually got to a point where we saw that they did not want to derive the basis of uh, Lulav or Arba Minim from the example of Sukkah, because we had then to determine that Sukkah was derived from the Miluim, okay? And that argument was, why is it therefore that we use Sukkah both morning and uh, evening, whereas uh, Lulav and Etrog is only daytime, okay? And we saw that was a lot of the discussion, okay? I'm sort of quickly doing a quick review in the hopes that the other guys on Zoom will be getting on, right? So we saw that, okay? And on the very bottom of Mem Gimel Amud Beis, okay? They came up with a couple of times of why is it that we, that if, why can't they override Shabbat in Eretz Yisrael in their day? And, the, and as opposed to in Babylonia, right? They said, well, we can't do it basically because we're not expert in setting the month, the date of the new month. But in Eretz Yisrael, they would be expert, okay? Because particularly that's where it was done, right? So we finished sort of there, okay, with that issue, okay? And then we sort of went over to the top of Mem Dalad. Amud Aleph. So if we look at Mem Dalad Amud Aleph, okay, we see at the begin top of the Amud, right? So let that's what we're going to start picking up today. All right, Mem Dalad Amud Aleph, Amre Ladidho Nami Lodache. That was the answer they given that the rabbis say in Eretz Yisrael also, okay, that the obligation of using the Arba Minim for the first day, 
does not override Shabbat. Okay, and that's basically where the Gemara, okay, ve'ela kashya hani tartma. So therefore, the Gemara says, therefore, our two brightas or our two Mishnaya, okay, nevertheless were problematic. Why were they problematic? One, remember, was saying that the people would bring it to the bait to the Azara, based on Mikdash. Okay. And one said that they said they brought it to Shul. Okay. And remember, with regards to the Mishnah that said they brought it to Shul, they said uh, even then that was seemed to be an issue. Okay. So that's where the Gemara is why it says, Ve'ela Kasha Hani Tartu, that these two items, right? The two Mishnah seem, still seem to be problematic. So I'm Mem Dalad, Amud Aleph. I'm now continuing the second line, okay? As they spell out again and review for us what the two Mishnayot say, okay? The Tanachada, because one talk, Kol ha'am molichim et lulavehen lahar habayat. Because one said everybody brought their lulavim, in other words, their arba minim, to the temple area, okay, to the base of Mikdash precinct. Okay? Vatani idach in the other Mishnah taught, the Beit Hakneset. Okay? So that was uh, just a quick review of what are these two contradictory or not? Ah, excellent question, Sam. Okay, we know certainly at the time of the second base of Mikdash, there was for sure, right? That they used to do some of the same davening in a shul in the base of Mikdash, okay? That is a good point, right? When did they start davening instead of Korbanot? Oh, that's a hard question to answer. I could be a, a smart guy and tell you, well, when they were during the Babylonian exile, they must have been davening with no Korbanot. Right? If the first temple was destroyed and they didn't well, and they didn't have a base of Mikdash. And no, but that second temple. So when they came back from Babylonia and they reestablished the base of Mikdash, they already had the returnees already had a practice of synagogues. They were in Babylonia for 70 years, right? So that would be a, a smart guy's, a wise guy's answer. But since I'm not that wise, I can't be sure to give you that specific answer, just an idea to think about. Do we really know completely? Do we really know? Well, I can tell you that you're saying davening the way we understand davening. Okay, but in terms of prayer, there was prayer already quite earlier, even during the individual prayer during the time of the first temple as well. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, so actually, a few years back, I gave a whole shia on that. Not one shia, but a whole, you know, seasons shia on that. On, on the whole history of tefillah okay? and the various aspects of it. Okay? So the Gemara wants to come back and try to give an answer to solve what would be the potential thinking that there's a contradiction here, right? Umetratzinan, and we give a terutz, right? We give an answer. Kan bizman shebet hamikdash kayam. Right? That would seem pretty logical. One, it was during the time the temple was, there was a temple. Another one, the time when there was no temple. Okay. Lo, no, says the Gemara. Edi v'edi, Bizman Shabet Hamikdash Kayam. 
No, we're talking about a time when it could give a different answer. When both, when the second temple was in existence, okay? So what was the explanation now? Velokasha, and we don't have to see this a difficulty. Why? Kan b'mikdash, kan b'gvulim. Because one was a situation in the temple area, in other words, in Jerusalem, okay? And one were those outside of Jerusalem in the suburbs or, or in the rest of the country, okay? So that was in second. That, that implies that Jerusalem itself outside of the Harabias was Gavuan and not. Right, and that would be that. Remember we said that was one of the earlier questions. Was Jerusalem considered like the temple area as a whole or was it considered like the, the rest of the country? And this seems to imply, okay, that it could be, that was right, what Rashi seems to suggest. Okay, there are others who are, could argue against that view, right? Amar le'abai, the rabba. And so now we continue. Maishna lulav da avdina lulei shiva zeche lemikdash. Umaishna arava de lo avdina lulei shiva zeche lemikdash. Okay, a whole brand new issue. How come we do lulav, right? Zeche lemikdash, seven days. Okay, but arava, we don't do seven days. Right, Amarle, O Ilva Adam, Yotse Yede Chovato, Ba'arava Shabalula. So Rava gives an example, okay? And his answer is because we have the Arava attached to the meaning, okay? Therefore, that also fulfills our obligation that had been used in the Beit HaMikdash for the circuits or for the placing it there around the Mizbeah. Okay? Now, I'm going to interrupt for a moment and say, we're going to say, have a still further question. Okay? If you use the Arava for two different purposes, and you're going to argue that the Arava attached to my Lulav satisfies, fine, that only serves really one purpose as part of Arba meaning. How does that satisfy the second purpose of the Arava that was associated with the Beis HaMikdash and the Mizbeach? Yes. Okay, hold on. You, I want to hear him and then. But the ones they used for the Mizbeach were like seven feet tall. They weren't the, you couldn't put that on your... Uh... Okay, so your answer is, it was a, a different uh, uh, aspect of the Arab. Yeah. And your answer? I mean, it's all done, the, the Rava in the, Ar of the Arab medium is a, is a remembrance of what was done in the basic English. It doesn't they, have to be the exact same, same right. one. Right. Okay, good answers on both parts. The Gemara, though, has got to address that issue. At least some point, or Rava has to address that issue, right? So let's see what happens. Amarle, so Abaye comes back and he says to him, You're saying that that was the case? Amarle, ahumi shum lulav hu de Okay, that he was doing because he was using the Arava what associated. The function, uh, what was the function of the Arava other than the Arava meaning? It was part of a, on Hoshana Rabba, okay? Yeah. It was used as part of a ceremony, I'm going to say, part of the Avoda in the Beis HaMikdash. That's, that's but we, rem we had this discussion of whether they walked around with it or whether they just stood it up in okay around the Mizbeach. No, we don't. Okay, that's uh, that's not the same. What do we do with the Hoshanas? Okay, no, we beat them. Okay, 
we won't, okay, and then we, all right, so that's the question. So we don't do the exact same thing that they did then, okay? V'chitema deka magbale v'hada magbele. And if you're going to say, well, they raise it, and then they raise it a second time. In other words, then I could understand Rava's answer. He could say, one time I lift the Arava as part of the Arba Minim. That would satisfy the purpose of Arba Minim. A second time that I lift the Arava, okay? And maybe that should have been lifted in and of itself, okay? That would satisfy Zechur the Mikdash of the Avoda in the Beis HaMikdash. Okay? That's the case. Vaha, right? Ma'asim b'chol yom d'lo ka'avdin in hachi. But we see, says the Gemara, on a daily basis that they don't do that. Okay? They don't lift the Arava twice. They just lift it the one time as connected with the bound up mm -hmm. of the Adonimi. Okay? So what happens now? Amar Rav Zebul, he's going to come back and tell us as follows, right? Mishmei de Rava, in the name of Rava. So he's trying, he's going to give us support, at, right? Lulav da right, da avdinen shiva zechel mikdash Because the lulav is commanded as a Torah-mandated practice, therefore we can say it's Zechel Mikdash. Arava de Rabbanan lo avdinen la shiva Zechel Mikdash. But an Arava, which is only of rabbinical expectation, rabbinical, that he says, therefore we don't do it seven days, and therefore he, that's why we don't do it as part of Zechel Mikdash. So Gemara asks, Laman, according to whom? Ilema la Abba Shaul. If you say it's based on Abba Shaul, right in earlier, Tana Ha'amar, who says, Arve nach, when the Torah says Arve, it's plural, right? Uh, uh, right? Aravim, Aravos, connected with the uh, uh, water source, right? Nachal Kati. Shtayim, that tells us that we need two. Echat lulav vechat lamikdash. Okay, so maybe that's why we would base it. One for each. Ila Rabbanan. And if you say it rabbinically only requires. Can't be Abishol because he's darshing the Torah. Right, he's darshing the Torah. And he would therefore require that you'd have to at least lift it twice, Rab Zavid is saying, right? Hilchata gamirala. Okay? But on the other hand, the rabbis say it's a halacha la Moshe Misinai. It's not a darsha. It's not a drasha. You don't have it from the Torah. Okay? The Amar Rabbi Asi, as Rabbi Asi says, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi Nechunya Ishbak at Beit Chortan, who says it based on another sage named Rabbi Nechunya from Bikas uh, Bay, from the valley of Beis Kortan, Eser Netiot. We have three things that we say were halacha Moshe misina. One, the issue of 10 plantings. I right? remember we talked about that, that there were 10 saplings in an area and you could therefore, de uh, during Shemitah year, you could do certain work on them. The second, Arava that the use of the Arava was Halach Lamosh Sinai, and the third was Nisu Hamaya, the water libation. Okay, right? Halach Lamosh Sinai. Those were all examples of Halach Lamosh Sinai, and the rabbis accepted that. Ela Amar Rav Zevid Mishmed Rav. But rather, what did Rav Zevid explain it? Lulav, eat like Ikar Min HaTorah. Okay, big vulin of dinim lay shiva zechel mikdash. Okay, that because lulav has its origin as a Torah mandated practice. Okay.
Okay. Therefore, in the environs, you know, in the rest of the countryside, that's when we can say we do it zeichel Migdash. Okay. Arava delete le ikar min but the the Aravas don't have a Torah source. Okay. Bigvulim lo avdin and shiva zeichel Migdash. We don't do it zeichel Migdash for any of the seven days. Of course, our practice, remember, is completely, we don't say that it's Doche Shabbos, okay? That's the point. So we don't have seven days of Lulav, right? Amar, okay, we saw that based earlier on Rabba's point. Zero. All right, Rabba's uh, right, Zero. Amar Reish Lakish. We now get to another, a new item. It says Reish Lakish. Kohanim Baalei Mumin Nichnisim Bein Ha'ulam Lamazbeah so according to Reish Lakish, even a Kohen who normally could not participate in the Avoda could nevertheless participate in the Arava part of the Avoda, being there in the temple precinct. Amar okay? Rabbi Yochanan, Mi Amra, according to whom? Mi Amra. According to whom? Ha'ihu Amar. He himself said it. Okay, why did Rabbi Yochanan ask that question? He was the one who supposedly said it. The Amar Rabbi Asi Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Because Rabbi Asi says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi Nechunya Ish Bikat Beit Chorotan. In the name of Rabbi Nechunya, etc. Esr Nitiot, these 10 saplings. Arava, the uh, use of the Arava and Misa Chamayim, Halacha Moshe Misinai. Okay, if he quoted him, it would seem to say if it's Halacha Moshe Misinai, it's acceptable for non, uh, from uh, Kohanim with Mumi. Ela mi amra benitila. No, the question is who said it that they could even come and take it? Right? Dilma. Bezikifa. Maybe it was not taken and marched around the Mizbeach that they didn't do it. Maybe it was simply that they stood it upright. Okay? And that's all that was done. And therefore, even those Kohanim who had Mumim were not participants. Okay. So the Gemara asks, therefore, Mi Amra, the Baalei Mumim, Dilma Bet who says it was it include those Kohanim, right? No, it maybe implies that again, only Kohanim without a mum would participate even in that aspect of the avoda. Okay. Now again, a new piece. Itma. We cited before. We said Rabbi Yochanan ve Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, right? Chad Amar Arava. Yesod Nevi'im, Bechad Amar Arava Minhag. Okay, this is a very um, interesting nuance here. One said that Arava was a ordinance or an obligation. Okay, Art Scroll and Koran translate the phrase Yesod here uh, differently. Okay. One, as I said, says it was an ordinance. All right, that's how uh, Corin wanted to translate it. Uh, Art Scroll translated in obligation. Okay, in other words, so you saw it, I would say, in other words, that it was founded by, established, okay, All right, by prophets. Therefore, if it was established by prophets, the implication is. It's almost like it's a do'oraita, and therefore you have to say a bracha before. Okay? On the other hand, one who said that it's minhag nevi'im, simply a custom that the nevi'im did, the implication is no bracha before the act is needed. So that's the big difference here. 
Chagai Zechaya and Malach. Chagai Zechaya and Malach. The last, last three Nevi'im, therefore, they were part of the Basin, of the Sanhedrin, and therefore they were looked upon as having a certain amount of authority. Okay? And so therefore, if they actually originated the practice, established, okay, therefore, that was considered almost like a Doraita and required a bracha before the act. This argues on what the Gemara said before that uh, a rabba is halacha moshe Sinai. Right, that's a question. If it's a halacha moshe, <coughs> that would be different. I didn't know that the had <coughs> certain power part in, in, in making rabbinical decisions. If they were part of the Sanhedrin, Okay. In general, were they? Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, the Masora is, they were part of the Sanhedrin. And as a result, then, they could make decisions of a rabbinical nature. Right? Okay. So the Gemara wants to say, Tistayim, maybe you should conclude the Rabbi Yochanan who, the Amar Yisod Nevi'im, that it was Rabbi Yochanan who said, that that was uh, established by the prophets. The Amar Rabbi Abahu, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. This is Rabbi Abahu in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Arava Yesod Nevi'im Hu. Okay, that he cites Rabbi Yochanan saying that, right? Tistayim, indeed you can conclude that that was the case, All right? So Amar Le Rabbi Zera Le Rabbi Abahu. And he asks Rabbi Zayn, <coughs> excuse me, Mia Ma Rabbi Yochanan Hachi, did Rabbi Yochanan really say that? <coughs> Sorry. Vahama Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi Nechunya Ish Bekat Beit Choratan. But again, wasn't Rabbi Yochanan who cited Rabbi Nechunya, who said that these items, Esher Nitiot Arava and Nisuchamayim were halachal emoshim Sinai. So how can he, on the one hand, say it was established by Nevi'im, as has the equivalent of a Dorabanan that's almost equal to a Doraita, and you need a bracha, and on the other hand, can cite somebody else and say it was halachal emoshim Sinai. Okay. So the Gemara now tells us, Eshtomeim Kesha'achada. Okay, what are we uh, saying here? All right, that this is rather, uh, okay, uh, problematic. I'll, I'll phrase it that way. All right, <coughs> citing the Pasuk, Va'amar Shechachum V'chazru V'yisadu. Maybe what we need to say Okay, is that this was forgotten? It was halacha Moshe Misinai, it was forgotten, and then these Nevi'im re established. In other words, it wasn't through an act of real Nevua that they got the message, but that was how it was done. So the Gemara asks, Rabbi Yochanan Hachi, did he really say that? Vahama Rabbi Yochanan. But didn't Rabbi Yochanan say, Dilachon Amr? Okay, theirs. All right, in other words, okay, we could say one of ours. No, okay, Amar Amre, Dilachon, he. Okay, but we could say it was, in other words, that's Rabbi Yochanan. That's yours, right? That was your tradition. A Dilahon, theirs, okay, was that, okay, a Babylonian tradition was that, okay, that the Babylonians said okay, that, was a good that they did not forget the Torah during the years of exile, okay? 
And what happens? Lo kash. We say that's not a problem then. Well, how? We go over to Amud Beis, Mem Dalad Amud Beis, Han B'mikdash. Okay, so we could argue now the fact that it was carried out in the Mikdash was based on Allah Moshe Misina. Han B'gvulin. But when it was done in the Gvulin, there we can say it was based on the custom of the prophets. And that's how we come to an answer. Okay. So it's not Zekra, the, the Mikdash? I mean, the, the, our mission seemed to say that a rubber was Zekra. No, but you could argue, okay, that it was, if you say it was Halacha the Moshe Misenai, right. that it could have been forgotten and then reestablished by the prophets, and that would apply to the Gvulim. Okay? Amar Rabbi Ami. Rabbi Ami now is going to raise a new question. So what about the temple? What about inside Beis HaMikdash? Aravat Sricha Shiur. Aravat, so everyone, we get to your point, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's time to go out. Not only did it have to have a certain shear, it had to be taken. Okay, in other words, not the arava that was used. They can't use the arava. That was bombed. No. Bombed no. the Mama, as the master said, because it was said that it had to be used on its own. Okay? So, therefore, now we understand why we need to have the separate bunch of Aravas. Okay? Um. Right, part of it. Now, where, where's the other thing come from? The, the other Arab What possible? Where, where, where? There is no possible. There is no possible. That's the problem. <laughs> so was it just no, no, that was a. That's why he argued it was a lack of the motion we see now. It was being done, and now we're exactly. And why. now we're thinking, oh, why was it being? What was the basis? Okay, remember the same way we don't know what exactly went on. We're talking about a moraim, a number of generations. Okay, when there is no base on the cash, so they're asking really the same question: What was done? What was? How did they do it? Okay. No, it was done, we just don't know right. why. Okay, so what happens? Pshita. It's obvious, he said. The Aina Dam Yotseba It's obvious then if you say it has to be taken by itself, okay. right? That it can't be the one that's been tied, bounded to the Alula. Mahu Detema. So what are you trying to tell us? That's a situation where they didn't raise it. They didn't lift it. Vahadar agbahe, And that they didn't lift it again. In other words, that's where they didn't use that arava twice. Once as part of the, right? Arba meaning. Then theoretically, you'd have to remove it and then lift it again. Okay. If that's the case. But if they lifted it and then again lifted it, aim low, I would say no, it doesn't satisfy. Kamash Malan comes to teach us that's not the case. Okay? So in other words, theoretically, okay, it's saying you could use that same arava or aravas that are attached to the Lula, okay? So long as you, number one, removed it and used it separately, and number two, you had to raise it, lift it twice, okay? Once as part of the Arba meaning and once by itself, okay? Now, what happens? Says the Gemara, <clears throat> right? 
Rav Rav Chista, Amar Rav Yitzchak. He says as follows: Adam yotze yodei chovato ba'arava shebalula. That a person can fulfill, therefore, that requirement, or I'll say the second purpose of their arava, with the arava that was attached with the lula, biyom tov harishon shalchag. Okay, on that first day of the holiday, the kamashiura. So how long does it have to be? How big does that aravos have to be? Right? Amar Rav Nachman says Rav Nachman shlosha bade alim lachim. They must be three branches of moist with moist leaves. Okay, so that tells us how many aravos we need. The Rav Sheshit the Rav Sheshit challenges him and says, "Afilu ale echad ubad echad, even one leaf on one branch." That's going to be very different. So the Gemara asks, "Ale echad ubar echad sarkadata." Do you think one leaf on one branch is is uh, that's acceptable? Ela ema, but rather I would say, afilu ale echad, bevad echad. Okay, at least, even if it has only one branch, one leaf on one branch. Okay, so in other words, the chatchila, you need one thing, but the dieved, if it came down to that, you could still be yotze. Okay, okay, let's go on now. Now, we get the name of a new sage, Ivo. Okay, Corin. Remember, if you ever look at Corin, you'll see they have a section marked personalities, and they describe who the sages are. Particularly significant, I think, in terms of those that are not commonly familiar with. Art Scroll has come out, by the way, with a whole separate volume that also has. A history of the Gemara and who sages are and things like that. So Koren's basic point is Ivo was the father of Rav. Okay, and uh, this particular piece is interesting because since we, we we've talked a little bit sometimes about Ravina and Rav uh, Ravashi editing the Gemara. And how sometimes if you have statements of a particular individual, even though those statements might not be on the same topic, what they did is if you cited the person once on let's say topic A, since you cited his name, you're going to, what they did I'm suggesting is they edited the Gemara in such a way, since you cited him once, you'll bring what other statements are passed on in his name as well. So that's what we're going to see here. Ivo is cited here, the father of Rav, okay, on this topic, but then they bring him some more. That was probably, probably partly an aid for memorization too, okay? All right, if, if I know that Sam Coleman was a judge and he gave such and such a, ca on such a case, okay? I might, therefore, if I remember, it's like, oh, and by the way, did you know that he also was, I gave a ruling on such and such a case, okay? So it's, uh, so we can understand how the Gemara is now gonna pick up and continue. So we come back to Ivo being cited Okay, Amar Ivo, he said as follows, Hava Ka'amina, he said, Ivo says, as the father of Rav, okay, I remember I was standing, he says, Kame de Rabbi Eliezer Bar I was standing with a major colleague, okay, right, what happened? And we were probably discussing this issue. And a certain person brought an arava before him. Shaki. 
I'm Shri Shapes. I'm Shri Shell. Shri Ian Sukhas. I'm Shana Ram. I'm Shana Right? Shakil Chabit. Okay. So what did he do? He took it and he waved it. Right? Chabit. Chabit, Chabit. Okay, and then he waved it a second time, velo bereich, but he did not say a blessing on it. Okay. Now remember, we just got through saying that did we say that Arava was yesod neviim or minhag neviim, and if it's yesod neviim, we'd need to say a blessing on it. If it's only minhag neviim, we wouldn't say a blessing on it. Okay, so this incident is a real ma'aseh that comes to give us a, a, a position halachically, right? Kasavar min That implied, right, that Rabbi Eliezer Reb Sadok thought it was only, I shouldn't say only, thought it was min hag and not yisod nevi'im. Okay? Now, since they mentioned that, the Gemara goes on. However, we have an interesting phenomenon here. Ivo v'chizkiya. Now, who is this Ivo? This Ivo is not the same Ivo before. This Ivo is the grandson of Rav, which is, I thought, very interesting to tell us Already back then, there was already the custom of naming children after deceased uh, family members. So that, living. what? This is living family. No, this is deceased. This one. This one is is great. This is this time. This Ivo is the grandson of Rob. Yeah, so in other words, so that. He, another daughter. Rav's daughter, okay, named her son after her grandfather. Okay, when they're living, that's fine, right? So I will the Chizkiah b'nei Barte de Rav. I will and Chizkiah, who are the sons of the daughter of Rav. Okay. So in other words, she actually named him after her. her no, Rav was her father no, after no, her no. grandfather. Okay. So that was why I'm saying the fact that that custom goes back. Okay. So we now see why the Ashkenazim may be picked up on that as opposed to Sfarn. Anyway, the point is uh, just, right? Could have, but it's yeah. doubtful. <laughs> anyway, what happened? I to Arava the Kame de Rav. And now they tell a little different story that somebody brought an Arava to there to Rav. Okay, so what happens? Chavit, he shake shook it. Chavit velo berech. He shook it a second time, but didn't say a blessing. Because he also was of the opinion that it was minhag nevi'im. So he followed the same practice as his father, Ivo. But it also gives us now two stories to show that there was a difference of opinion that it was minhag nevi'im, okay? So why could we argue it was minhag nevi'im? That would really fall more in line with halacha Moshe misinai, right? Okay, okay. So now we get a third example, Amar Ivo. Okay, which Ivo is it? I'm going to guess it really goes back to the, the original one. I, the father of Rav, have a amina kame de Rabbi Eliezer Barabbi Tzadok. Why? Because it says he was standing with Rabbi Eliezer Barabbi Tzadok. After the kame hahu gavi, and a person came before him, Amar, and he said to him, 
asking another Shaila. Mali, Kiriata Idle, I have villages. Karame, Karmaya Idle, I have vineyards. Okay, Zitaya Idle, and I have olives at those vineyards. Va'atu bene Kiriata, Ume Shak Shin, the Karmaya, and the people from the villages. <clears throat> to me come and they hoe the ground during the Shemitah year of my uh, my mm. vineyards, right? Va'ochlin bezetaya, and they eat those olives. Arich is this proper or not proper? He asks the shayla. Necessarily, they could be Jews. So he's asking, they come and do the work on Shemitah, okay? And is that proper? So he's asking a, a, a real Shiloh on this situation. It's not their field, though. What it's not it? their field, okay? So Amarle. So now Ivo is telling us what Rabbi, uh, right? Eliezer Barabi Tzadok answered as the child. Right. Okay? Lo arich. It's not proper. Have kashavi le va'azia. Okay? So the person began to leave, and then he came back. Amarle. And he said to him, Kado haviti daire ba'ara hada me'ishani. Okay? I've already lived here for four, right, years, okay, in this area, for uh, four, 40 years I've lived in the area. V'lo hamite ba'inish mahalech ba'archan de taknan kedin, okay? And uh, I haven't seen a uh, person, that okay, said, right? Not right, that, that, uh, right, that hasn't, that I've never seen a person go uh, in and trying to follow the halacha, okay, as well as this person, right? Right, so what happens? Hadar va'ate va'amale. The person came back and then he said, ask the shaila, ma'im abad. <clears throat> what am I supposed to do then? Okay, so we're assuming Rabbi Elazar Bart Sadok answers him, amale, Okay, he says, I want you to make the olives hefker, uh, ownerless for the poor, right? Vatain pritaya, the kashkushe kramin, and pay other workers, okay, to do the hoeing of the, of the vineyards. Why is paying for the work making it all right? Well, we're going to see if the Gemara answers that. Good question, Steve. The kashkushe mishare and hoeing, paying for the hoeing during Shemitah. That's your question. Is that acceptable? Is that permitted? Vahatanya. But aren't we taught vashvi'it tishmatena v'nitashta that on the Shemitah, right? We're supposed to uh, leave it, right? Not do it. Isn't that the case, right? Tishmatena milikash kesh, vinitashta milisakel, says the Gemara. We're supposed to, one thing is to leave the hoeing, another thing, right, is to uh, remove the question of removing rocks, right? So, what do we understand? How do we understand that? Clearing the so Rav Ukva Bar Chama now is going to clarify it for us. There were two different means of clearing, hoeing the land. Okay, one was basically what we'll call covering the roots. The Chad Avruye Ilane. And another kind was to aerate the trees. 
for the benefit, the health of the trees. Okay? Avruye ilane asur. Okay, aerating the trees, that was forbidden. Stume pile, but covering any cracks in the ground. Okay, just so to speak, smoothing out the land. Share, that's permitted. Now, Amar Ivo, once more, a new piece. It says, Ivo Mishum Rabbi Elazar Rabbi Tzad. Al Yehalech Adam Ba'arve Shabbatot Yoter Mishlosha Parsaot. He's citing Rabbi Elazar Rabbi Tzadok that a person should not go more than three parsangs. A parsang was a Persian measurement for distance. It was equal to, uh, I think, four uh, meal, which was the Roman uh, measurement of distance that was used in Eretz Israel. Okay, so it gives us a sense. Okay. Amar Rav Kahana, lo amran el labete. We said this only in regards to his going to his home. Aval le but if he's going let's say out to a, an inn or someplace, if he's traveling, okay? It, wouldn't it be permitted? Am I, why would we say that that's not acceptable? Dinakit samich, okay? Why? Because we're saying that him, right? That what happens here, okay? That he's uh, taking something with him, right? And there are those who say, Okay, that it was said, okay, regarding one's home, right? In other words, that he should have, make things, arrangements in advance and not wait till Erev Shabbos to do these kinds of things. Amar Rav Kahana, Bididi Hava Uvda. Rav Kahana says, the, the same to me, I had this situation. When I came home one time, okay, uh, fr Friday night, so close to Shabbos, I didn't even have a small fried fish to eat. Okay, and that was the implication being, don't wait to the last minute to get your Shabbos arrangements in order, okay? As we finish up now, mitzvot lulav ketzad, okay? All right, so the question being again, arranging the lulav in the temple on the first day when Sukkot and Shabbos came together, right? Tane tane kame de Rav Nachman sudurin al gad ha Okay, so they said, when we said that they brought it, remember, to the temple, what did they do? He said, uh, according to him, they arranged the lulavim on the roof, on a benches on the roof. Amarle, he said to him, what? If he leaves them out on top of benches on the roof of the base of Mikdash, it's going to dry it up. It's going to shine on them. It's going to dry out the lulavim. And as a result, you're not going to have valid lulavim. I would say as follows. Rather, he would put it simply on the benches. Amar Rechava, Amar Rav Yehuda, Har Habayit, Stav Kafu Haya, Stav Lufnim Mistav. No, he says, Rav, uh, Rav uh, Rechava is saying, no, they didn't put it on the roof. There were columns, rows of columns. And between the rows of columns, which were covered, that's where the benches were. And they put them on those benches. And so that's how they handled it. Was the roof the roof in this region? Sure. Sure, there was a roof. No. no By the walls, there was a roof. There was an Sandra, but in the middle, the, the, the middle was down. open. But the long, right? Right? Like Don't walls. you remember? We we once learned that the roof had these spikes coming up in the top, 
so that birds wouldn't land. Okay. <clears throat> that was on top of the, the right. The <laughs> All right. So we'll stop there and take a moment. Ram hey. Everybody have a good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. What time tomorrow? Tomorrow the daf is before Mincha. Before Mincha. Oh, I've got the, the weekly here. It is at 550. Okay. Yeah. All right, everybody there, have a good Shabbos. Stay well, guys. Eddie. Ken. He's off. Ken. He's off. Uh, Take care. Have a good shot. Thank you, darling. Come in right now. Sally came in and I told her about this.